The Shroud of Turin took some burn and water damage during a fire in a church in 1532 where it was being stored. But the main image on the 14 foot long cloth shows the front and back of a naked man 5 feet 10 and a half inches tall, about 175 pounds. There are bloody wounds on his wrists, feet, side, and head, and his back is covered with whip cuts. The male blood has high levels of the pigment bilirubin, and creatinine nanoparticles are all over the shroud. Both of these are indicators of severe trauma. The image was not painted or drawn. The very tops of the linen threads, about 0.2 micrometers thick, are scorched by radiation, not heat. Three Italian scientists worked from 2005 to 2010 in a National Energy Agency lab on their own time to match that effect on linen. Eventually they came close by using brief laser pulses at wavelength 200 to 100 nanometers called vacuum ultraviolet light because air readily absorbs it. The body was on top of half of the cloth and covered by the other half. The ultraviolet rays could not have come from outside the cloth. They must have come from inside, from the body itself, to leave the image. No other known image has ever been made this way. Certainly there were no intense ultraviolet light generators in ancient or medieval times. Even so, many people think the shroud was made between 1260 and 1390 AD because of the carbon-14 test done in 1988. The Pope had finally allowed one tiny corner piece near the feet to be radiocarbon dated, but some experts had warned that the area selected showed signs of textile repair. For hundreds of years the shroud had been taken out to display to crowds of people. It had been held by the edges, and these had worn out over time and been repaired. The piece to be tested for carbon-14 was cut from one of the repair patches on the edge that had been dyed to match the original shroud. When the results came back from three labs, people saw the dates and said science had spoken, but it was sloppy science. Since then, critics have called for another carbon-14 test, but the Catholic Church has not approved it. Before 1988, the Vatican had prevented the shroud from being studied by scientists until 1978 when 35 specialists were allowed to do tests as long as they did not harm the shroud. The lead chemist had collected linen fibers on adhesive tape, and in 2005 he published the results of tests he had made. His conclusion? The combined evidence from chemical kinetics, analytical chemistry, cotton content, and pyrolysis mass spectrometry proves that the material from the radiocarbon area of the shroud is significantly different from that of the main cloth. The radiocarbon sample was thus not part of the original cloth and is invalid for determining the age of the shroud. More fibers collected in 1978 were dated by Italian scientists using three different tests, two chemical and one for tensile strength. The average of their published results is 33 BC plus or minus 250 years, around Jesus' lifetime. That is not surprising. The cloth folded to show only the face of Jesus is linked to the legend of a king of Edessa, 400 miles north of Jerusalem, known as Urfa today, who ruled from 13 to 50 AD. Apparently it was well known and highly protected for hundreds of years, because in 944 AD a Byzantine emperor sent an 80,000 man army to take the image of Edessa, and it was brought to Constantinople. A monk there wrote of it in a way that describes the shroud. It is again mentioned in a Byzantine emperor's letter in 958 AD and in an imperial inventory of Christian relics in 1201 AD. The French crusader knight Robert de Clary wrote in his memoirs that the shroud in which our Lord had been wrapped was kept in a church and displayed every Friday until it disappeared in 1204 when Constantinople was pillaged by French crusaders during the Fourth Crusade. The shroud was displayed in 1355 in the French town of Lire, while in the possession of a famous Templar knight, Geoffrey de Charny, 
who claimed it was the cloth that wrapped the Lord Jesus Christ after his death. From then on, the shroud has a detailed recorded history. The burial is consistent with ancient Jewish burial customs in all respects, including the use of cave tombs, hands folded over the loins, and type of cloth. The burial shroud, or sindon, covered the whole body. The sudarium was a face cloth used to cover the face out of respect during removal from the cross and entombment. It was then placed to one side. A linen cloth called the sudarium christi, or the face cloth of Christ, is in the Cathedral of Oviedo in northern Spain. The Sudarium Christi is a poor quality linen cloth, like a handkerchief, measuring 33 by 21 inches. There is no image, but it does have blood stains of blood type AB and serum stains from pulmonary edema fluid, which match the Shroud of Turin. The Sudarium Christi has a well-documented history back to 570 A.D. The Shroud of Turin is unique. It shows the body of a man tortured and killed exactly as the Gospels describe, and the image is impossible for us to create. Thus it is physical proof that Jesus existed, was tortured to death, as told in the Bible, and was supernaturally resurrected. He was who he said he was. Through the centuries, many people have believed this by faith alone. Here is hard evidence. Now that you know, the choice is yours what to do with it.